Today's creature may not have any natural predators, but if it did, they would be very time consuming. Do I really want to start the video with that? Hello and welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of D&D and other tabletop games and bring them to light for use in your current 5th edition D&D campaign. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we're going to be taking a look at a creature that comes to us from Dragon Magazine 69. A very special issue of Dragon Magazine, all about gods and deities and otherworldly beings, and that is where we got the first instance of the Time Elemental. That's right, folks, you've probably heard of the Water Elemental, the Fire Elemental, the Earth Elemental, and maybe even an Air Elemental, or a few things in between. All of these outsider beings that come from other planes of existence, each one of them a true manifestation of the being of that plane. For example, you have your fire elementals that come to us from the plane of fire. They are creatures literally made out of fire. Or air elementals that come to us from the plane of air. Creatures literally made out of air. So by D&D's own logic, it would then stand to reason that some of the other less elemental planes might have beings manifest from what those planes actually are. Trying to explain this while not sounding like I'm high as a kite is actually a much bigger challenge than I originally thought it was going to be. But in any case, the time elemental kind of stems from that train of thought where what if a being was kind of manifested of the stuff of the outer planes from the plane of time? So what does that mean? What does it mean that a creature is made of time? Well, today I'm going to tell you. We're going to talk about just what this creature can do in combat and of course some ways that you can use it in your game. I'm really excited about this creature and I can't wait to start talking about it. So without further ado, let's get into some... So one of the first things you're going to notice about this creature when you take a look at the stat block, assuming you're reading it top to bottom like a normal person, is that it has a very slow move speed. And by very slow, I mean it has a move speed of 5 feet, which is insane. These creatures are just kind of meant to be these slowly plodding along kind of beings that don't much care for anyone around them or other things, objects, people, places, whatever. Because they have a goal, whatever that goal may be, and they're just trying to get to it. They're just trying to get through their day, and they're going to do that as slowly as need be. But, being beings, that's how that sentence works, of time, they can move forward and backward through time, albeit at a limited amount of time at once. So rather than simply moving five feet at a time, which they might be happy to do if they're not in combat... They have an ability where once during their turn, they can teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space. And they do this by literally moving themselves forward through time to the point where they would have been standing at that location. So to look at a time elemental, it might not simply just be plodding along, although it very well could be. It's more likely to be blinking in and out of existence, kind of going from one location to the next. Now as far as actual attacks go, this creature has one and only one attack that it can make use of because they're not really built to be aggressive beings, but as a creature that has control over time itself, they will for sure have some means to defend themselves. And that one attack is called Rapid Decay. The time elemental literally just has to reach out and be able to touch somebody, so it is an attack. But if they can succeed in doing so, they're literally aging the cells of that person or object or whatever their target is so rapidly that they start to die off and cause a pretty significant amount of necrotic damage. Additionally, just by being in the vicinity of a time elemental while it's doing this to the target, the target also ages 2d10 years. Now the time elemental at first glance doesn't seem like a really horrific creature, but that rapid cell death that happens and then following necrosis is going to be just disgusting to behold, especially if it's happening to you. And the aging between 2 and 20 years is an additional kick in the butt because that's just mean, really. Now in Dungeons and Dragons, typically things that age you, like being attacked and scared by a ghost or other like effects, can be reversed with the spells like the Remove Curse spell or other types of magic. 
But with this, unless you're using some very high level magic that would actually be able to just turn a regular person younger, you're not going to be able to reverse this aging. And the reason for that is because it's not a curse or magical effect. That person has literally aged that amount of time. The implications of that are pretty scary, especially to some players who are playing less long-lived races such as humans. I also like creatures that impose effects outside of stats and hit points because this gives you as a DM a little bit of wiggle room. Say someone who is already an aged character gets affected by this, that elderly wizard might now be on the brink of death, which they were still 10 or 20 years away from beforehand. Or you could have the young upstart adventurer who's maybe in their late teens or early 20s who is now in the middle of their life. And that's a really crazy change to go through all of a sudden. And who knows, it could open up a whole side quest where you then have to go and find the means to reverse that aging process. I know I've played in several campaigns where that's been the case before because someone magically aged by other means, so... It leaves a little bit of openness to you as a DM to do what you want with that effect. Now one of the other major means of protection and in some cases offense that this creature has is it can use an ability called Timeline Disruption. Now essentially what this ability allows the Time Elemental to do is target any number of creatures that are within 60 feet of it and move them forward or backward briefly through time. Now mechanically what this means is you as the DM get to look at all of them on the grid or if using theater of the mind just kind of math it out in your head of where all the players are and move them around anywhere you want within that 60 feet. The only caveats here are that you can't replace them into somewhere that would cause them harm immediately like over the side of a cliff or into a burning fire. But it does mean that if a time elemental is fighting with other allies, it can reposition the party to make them more vulnerable to its allies' attacks. Or it could be used to give itself some space and push everybody back. And of course, traveling through time, even if only a few seconds, can be very... terrible for someone who isn't used to that. So any creature who is affected by this ability has to, of course, make an intelligence save, and if they fail it, they are under the effects of a confusion spell for 1d4 rounds. So maybe they'll be able to act normally after, or maybe they'll simply be sickened and not be able to do anything and just kind of shocked by what's happening. There's all kinds of ways this could go for the party, but it's an interesting little quirk that, again, just kind of plays into what this creature actually is, a being made of time. The other thing this creature can do is cast a few spells, and these spells are all kind of meant to be on the theme of time manipulation. For example, it can cast Hold Person, which for a time elemental isn't using magic to hold them, it might be literally freezing that person in time. Or it can cast Banishment, teleporting that creature for a few rounds into the far, far future where there's just nothing, or in the opposite direction to the far, far past where there's nothing in the location where they are for just a few seconds. And I would be terrible at what I do if I didn't give this creature access to slow, give it the ability to literally slow down the flow of time in a certain area. And of course, things like legend lore allow it from an out of combat perspective to kind of glean information that most creatures normally wouldn't be able to have. And this kind of is tied into the fact that this creature has a plus nine to history as well, because while it might not know the answer to a question right away, it can conceivably look into that place in time and try to get some information about anything that's already transpired. But the most powerful tool in this creature's spell kit, which should come as no surprise to you that it has, is... Time Stop. Now granted, it can only do this once per day, but it can cast Time Stop, which, if you're not familiar with how that works, you stop time for everyone but yourself for one plus one d4 rounds. So for between one and five rounds, this creature can kind of do whatever it wants within a limited radius. The only caveat here is that once it causes harm to another creature, it breaks the spell and time begins flowing as normal once again. But this creature has plenty of things it can do with a few rounds to itself. I just mentioned several of the spells in its arsenal. It also has access to foresight so it can buff itself up put slowing areas down on the other creatures, and just reposition itself and everyone else into whatever situation is going to best benefit it. And the best part is for your players, describing this to them, I wouldn't even say it casts time stop and then it does this and then it does this. Just move things around on the board however the elemental would have chosen to move them, 
and just go as normal because for them no time has passed time literally just stopped and then unstopped while the elemental kind of did some stuff behind the scenes maybe some of the more intelligent characters might have a bit of an inkling as to what's going on or that something happened but it shouldn't be outright obvious let the players figure it out because i'm sure they will but i mean just think about it the party sees the time elemental coming towards them and they're going towards it whatever situation you've set up beforehand it's clear that battle is about to begin and then suddenly The creature appears in a different location and seems to have all kinds of magical effects going around on it. One of the party members is held fast and they can't move. No one else really seems to know why or what's happening. It's a great opening to an encounter. But if it hasn't used time stop during the encounter, it can also use it as a panic button. If it needs to suddenly escape, it can cast time stop and use those rounds to just get out of there. The spell is not only extremely on theme, it just allows for a lot of unique encounter possibilities that wouldn't normally be available to you as a DM. So have fun with it. And if all else fails, it has its final trump card, which is simultaneously extremely dangerous for the party or whatever it's fighting but also extremely dangerous for the elemental, which kind of makes it cool. This creature has an ability called Recall, which allows it to call for aid from both past and future versions of itself. So what happens is one to six of these elementals that are literally identical to the one that is the original summoning elemental appear within a few feet of it. And when you're using this ability, I would describe some of the elementals as looking exactly the same as the original one, but maybe some of them have much more oxidization on any armor or anything that they're wearing, whereas others have new and kind of fresher looking versions of that same armor. Of course, if your elementals don't have anything on them, then it's kind of hard to convey that, but I would try to convey still that they look exactly the same as the original creature to hopefully give your players an inkling as to what's happening. This is obviously very powerful, but the reason I say it's kind of dangerous as well is because all these elementals share one thing in common, and that is their HP pool. So if the Barbarian axes one of these guys, it's going to drain that much hit points from all of them. Well, that doesn't seem like a huge disadvantage at first, but if you have, say, a wizard in the party who were to drop a fireball, that damage is going to be multiplied for each one of the creatures that's hit by it. So if it does 10 damage to all of them and there are six of them, their collective hit point pool is going to take 60 damage. And that's why this ability should be used sparingly. Time elementals are extremely intelligent, so it should know when it does and doesn't want to use this ability. And if your party is able to catch it off guard, then that's just their reward for figuring out the puzzle, essentially. So that's all I really have to say about these guys in combat, but there's definitely a lot of room to explore when it comes to the stories we tell using these creatures. So let's take a look at some. Elementals are super, super weird. They all speak primordial, but each of them kind of speak their own dialect. Earth elementals speak Terran, fire elementals speak Ignan, etc. But it is ultimately all just different versions of the same language. Primordial. When it comes to languages and old versions of D&D, kind of every different creature type had their own language, and it was a lot... 5th edition has done a lot to scale that into just a several core languages, which I think is amazing. However, when it came to the time elementals, the only language that really made sense for them to speak would be primordial, because that is the language of elementals. I'm not going to lie to you, it was so hard for me to resist the urge to make up another primordial-based language and just say they speak timordial, but we're not going to go there. In any case, these creatures are extremely intelligent and they absolutely can communicate and converse so long as whoever they are trying to converse with also speaks primordial or has the magic to allow themselves to do so. What do they have to say? That's a really great question. Time elementals are very weird. They are creatures that exist outside of time but are also made of it. So... Their goals and aspirations are very esoteric at best. In a way, they are the ultimate procrastinators because they literally have all the time in the world. So there's no reason for them to hurry with anything. And I imagine their method of speaking is quite slow and nonspecific. However, 
you could use this creature as a kind of information giving NPC. If your party happens upon one or they find a location where a time elemental lives, they might be able to complete some kind of task for it in exchange for information, or maybe this elemental just for whatever reason aligns its goals with what the party in your campaign is trying to do. And if that's the case, time elementals are a wealth of knowledge. As I mentioned, they have access to the legend lore spell, which allows them to learn about pretty much anything. And with that incredible history score, they're gonna be able to provide a ton of information so long as your players know the right questions to ask. For example, a time elemental might be able to look in on any place at any time, but if the players can't give it a location where the events that they're asking about transpire, the time elemental is not really going to know how to help them. Alternatively, you could make the time elemental the goal. Perhaps a powerful scholar in the city of Waterdeep or whatever. Perhaps a venerable scholar who studies the history of the world has put out a call for a reward if a time elemental is captured and brought to him. Capturing a time elemental is not an easy task, but through use of magic, whether it be spells or magic items, it is possible. The interdimensional handcuffs in 5th edition come to mind. So this could be like a next level monster hunt for a party, where they're hunting an intelligent creature that very clearly does not want to be captured, and that also kind of creates a bit of a moral dilemma because maybe the scholar's reasoning for wanting a time elemental are good and actually important. It might end up saving lives. But a time elemental is a sentient creature with vast intelligence. So perhaps the party decides to go about a way where they try to converse with it and convince it to come back. In either case, it's going to be an interesting encounter for sure. Another interesting quirk about the elementals that I would really play up if you're using them in your game is that they don't like being off the plane of time. And if they are not on the plane of time, it's for a very good reason. Because in the plane of time, time kind of flows in every which direction. So that's where they feel most at home because time is more like a road for them to travel along and less of a constant flow. On a place like the material plane where time only flows in one direction, a time elemental is going to feel very constrained. And on a place like the Astral Sea, where time doesn't flow at all, it's going to feel near suffocation. To be on a place like the Astral Sea for a time elemental must be extremely uncomfortable. And this could be the reason why, in your world, time elementals are very rare and not seen at all. Maybe never seen before and now, which is why you're just introducing them into your game. Because why would they want to leave the one place that is only comfortable for them? Other beings might go there and find it disorienting, but to them, it's the same as what we would feel like on the material plane. In any case, I find these creatures extremely fascinating, and I feel like there's a lot of depth with what you can do with them, even though they don't have a million fancy abilities just by being what they are. They're very cool and interesting creatures. I honestly didn't think I was going to find another elemental that I wanted to do a video on because as many of you will know, I went through a bender last summer where I did a lot of different elementals. So this was a pleasant surprise. Also, I do apologize for the art being kind of all over the place for this video. Finding official art for this creature was impossible because it's basically non-existent. And by non-existent, I mean the only piece of official artwork we actually have is this. And this is directly from Dragon Magazine, and if you can explain to me how this is supposed to be a time elemental, then... I don't know. But like a lot of that old artwork, it has kind of a cool charm to it. But unfortunately, there's just not a ton to display about this creature, so most of it is kind of abstract. So this creature can literally look like whatever you want it to. So you could have this creature manifest as a sort of ethereal being that is made of a substance that's not tangible to most creatures, which I find really fascinating. But you could also have it manifest more utilitarian, have it show up with kind of chains and stuff slung over its shoulders and maybe many different hourglasses and that kind of thing hanging off of it, all of them flowing a different way. Some of them not flowing at all, despite the fact they're turned upside down. And just different tools of time measurement if you want to go kind of a more fantasy-esque way as well. 
But however you choose to represent this creature, I'm sure your players will love it as much as I do, and hopefully you enjoyed this creature, enjoyed this video. And if you do want to make use of the Time Elemental, you can find a link to the stat block in the description below. There's a Google document that contains everything you will need to successfully run this creature. Also, if you are one of my lovely patrons, you can find the Monster Manual style stat block on the Patreon page. And something that I'm going to start doing this week is if you use D&D Beyond, I will also be adding this creature to the homebrew bestiary section of that website. I know for some of you this won't matter at all, but for those of you who do use D&D Beyond, hopefully this makes your life a little bit easier and then you won't have to plug it in yourself. And of course, I'll leave a link to that in the description there as well. In any case, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. Until then.